Today, I went to a local restaurant for lunch and we ate on the patio and we happened to be pretty much the only people there. I think it was because it was Sunday. Um, it was a really nice, you know, afternoon, nice and cool in the shade. We had a beautiful view of these blooming Palo Verde trees across the street and they were kind of like nicely framed by these eucalyptus trees that were actually on the patio. It was a lot of fun. We also brought our dog and they gave him like an entire bowl of salmon. <laughs> It was like the best day of his life. So I actually brought my sketching materials to try and sketch from the patio, but then I was just having a lot of fun eating and everything. So I decided I'd just take pictures and I would sketch from them later. And that is what I'm going to do now. So does anybody remember on yesterday's video when I said, oh, I'm going to do something simple tomorrow? <laughs> Lies. Um, that was my ambition, but of course that is not what happened. So I do, however, really like how this turned out. It took forever. It took, it was just so complicated. It was a really complicated composition with the way all the lines were going. And I had to really think a lot about perspective and making sure everything was placed correctly. Um, and I also, so you probably noticed that I went through and for the part that is closer, I used my sepia fine liner. And I did that because everything on here was kind of brown and had kind of like a warm tone to it and I wanted it to um, stand out more. And so I did a lot more detailed work here. Um, and then in the background, pretty much, I think I did it all, yeah. I did everything in the light cool gray micron. So my idea was that it would mostly be covered up with watercolor and I wanted it to be just like subtle um, background details that weren't gonna draw your eye. I also like that area was very bright over there. So I also kind of wanted to like convey that it was kind of washed out by the sun. And so I used this, um, this masking fluid for to uh, put the trees in there so that the sky wouldn't cover them up and I'd have like really vibrant yellows when I finally put that in. And I think that worked pretty successfully. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I really do just have to shake this pen a lot and kind of clean it out and just bang it on the table a lot to get it to work. But <laughs> it did work and it did make really fine little dots, which was cool. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? So. Then I did um, a lot of the rest of the colors actually in watercolor. And because these pens are India ink, it worked beautifully. There was no problem with anything smearing or anything like that. Um, and I was able to even glaze watercolor over certain things that I had filled in with India ink, like this area. Like I had actually filled in um, for the fence area. I used the Kaput Mortem because this has a more reddish tone and, and that was kind of a different color than um, some ever, all the other things in here. So then I, I glazed over it with the Prussian blue um, and that worked really well. For the eucalyptus trees, I used these two markers to fill in the leaves and that works so much better than trying to do it with a paintbrush. I just like the precision that you can get. Those leaves are the right shape and, and they just, you know, they went over everything else very nicely. Um, this ink isn't perfectly opaque but it was dark enough that I only had to do it once. I didn't have to do all these layers, so that was nice. Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how that turned out, and I really like 
how the uh, mix of different mediums um, turned out how I'd kind of hoped, actually. So that was a lot of fun. Now, the next one I do really will be more simple, I think. 